and welcome back to Concert Critiques in Cars with Emily. Um, so I'm really excited about this show. I'm a little, like, so little side note from this show. On Saturday, I was supposed to go to an early show at the 930 Club. And listen, I understand that, like, doors and set times are subject to change. But no, sorry. When your show's supposed to start at 6 and end at 930 and then your show starts at 9 p.m., not okay. Um, I'm also like really bummed because I like email. Listen, I know it was a long shot, but I emailed and they basically like didn't care. And it was a little bit frustrating because you basically, like on a Saturday, that's basically like buying a ticket for a late show for a show that starts at nine o'clock. So a little disappointed with 9.30 club people right now, but you know, so there's that. Anyway, so today, a total different note, <laughs> wonderful positive note. Um, I went to the Lincoln Theater to see Half Alive. So pumped, so excited. Um, I had seen them when they had opened for Toy Violets, but this was the first time seeing them headlining. And yes, I just was so excited, so excited. So let's get into it. So um, getting there was actually really easy. I thought it was gonna be a nightmare because it was raining and the truck convoy and all this fun jazz, but it actually wasn't that bad. So I was pretty pumped about that. Um, and I parked in my special spot as always. A little bit further walk, but it's okay. I, it was perfect weather, so really couldn't have complained. Um, yeah, so the opener was Daisy the Great, and I had listened to a few of their songs beforehand, um, you know, female singers, so that's automatically not my favorite, but I really was trying not to judge because I did like their song Glitter. Um, so I was excited to see what they were like. Um, I really liked the instrumental opener and their first song, the slower beginning. And the two female lead singers start singing and I was like, oh no. I was like, this is not, this is like a nightmare of mine. <laughs> um, but then all of a sudden it got like super punk rocky and I was like, okay, that's like way better. It, it was touch and go there for a little bit there. But, uh, but yeah, so they definitely turned that around within the first song. It was a shorter song, but it was very good. Um, they introduced their current single, which is Glitter. And so it was like cool to hear that live. Definitely one of those like upbeat, dancey songs. Um, then they played a new song that they haven't released yet. It was called um, Aluminum. And um, they had like this cute little choreo choreographed um, section for the bridge and so that was really like a, a fun thing they're like yeah we like basically just practiced it today so you guys are, like the first ones to see it so so again just like a fun touch um, and then they they introduced and played record player which is the song that they collabed on with AJR and so they're like so it's neither our original song nor is it the collab so we're just gonna kind of like mix it up and put it together um, so I thought that was pretty cool you got to hear something that you definitely wouldn't hear on the radio so I liked that a lot um, and that song is just so catchy. And then um, they asked if anyone cries and they had people raise their hands and then they asked if anyone cries um, in their mirror and they had people raise their hand um, and then they played a new song, Cry in the Mirror, which I think is actually coming out this Friday with a music video. So they talked about making the music video. So that was kind of, again, like a fun touch. Um, and at the, it really sounded like very cranberries to me um, at the beginning. So, so yeah, I mean, I liked it. Um, and I, it was interesting, like the chorus had this like huge shift in music. So, so again, definitely an interesting song. Um, then they played, I'm just another person. Oh God. Um, that definitely had like more of a chill vibe. And honestly, I was actually like, not my favorite. I kind of didn't love the, I don't know, just like the feel of it or, or the fact that like the name didn't really seem to match like the goofiness of like. The, the goofiness of the name didn't really match the like seriousness of the song I don't know but it definitely wasn't my favorite um and then the drummer and the bassist left the stage so it was only the guitarist and keyboardist who are also the two lead singers um they played a slower song um I really liked it especially when it got a little bit heavier for like the bridge part so so yeah I actually really liked that song um and then they played another song that's not out yet um really liked the lyrics at the beginning I thought it was a good song and actually a really good follow-up to the previous song since it was slower but um not a great way to end their set like I thought it started like really strong and dancey and like you know getting the crowd into the show and then all of a sudden it's like they ended on like their two slower songs and I don't know that just like I wish they had ended on a more upbeat song um but overall I thought they were good um 
definitely better than I had gone in thinking that they were gonna be, so that was a nice surprise. <sighs> so then Apple Live came on. <laughs> Guys, I, I can't. They were just like so it's really hard to take notes at a half live show because everything happens all the time and they never stop and it's amazing and it's insane. So I'm gonna try my best. If I miss things, please let me know because I honestly was probably writing. All right, so they came out with a giant white sheet which they had done at the 21 Pilot Show. So I was glad that I at least was kind of privy to what was gonna be happening. Um, so, so yeah, so that was nice that they did that. And then they had this the um, band silhouetted behind it with light. And so all you saw were their silhouettes, which again is super cool. Really loved it. Um, they played Tiptoes to start. Um, and again, I really like that quick, like short feel to that song. Um, and it really did look super cool. Again, I don't know if it's just that they were headliners this time or maybe they had more room on the stage, but it was awesome. Um, they let the crowd sing verse of the next song which was the fall um and during the song he, like a little mini canvas thing came out and the lead singer spray painted it and with black and blue spray paint and then they threw it into the crowd and I was right next to the people who got it there was a little struggle with the row behind me behind us and then my row but my row won out of course I did not get it it was not worth the battle but not for me personally as the single person when there were like multiple people like grabbing on it um but yeah so it was cool it was a neat uh thing and you know I talked to the people afterwards and they seemed really excited about it so that was awesome um then they played Runaway <laughs> which is like so my song affairs I just love it so much um it's just so good um they had the dancers come out throughout the song and it just it's just so wonderful I just love that song I couldn't even take notes during it because I was just rocking out to it. It was great. Wish it was like later in the set because I love it so much, but it was fantastic. Um, then they played Back Around, which I was actually really excited about seeing this new EP or this new half of their album. Um, so yeah. So um, I really um, like loved hearing it live. I was excited. Um, they like it was really dancey compared to the recorded version in my opinion live and so I really really like that it just it made it sound so different and I love when that happens um so yeah then uh, he asked the crowd to go low but I honestly don't think a lot of people heard him and then all of a sudden he like jumped up and was crazy again so I think we missed that opportunity as a crowd so that was a little bit disappointing um and then the dancers came back out for the instrumental end which was amazing and awesome and I really loved it um, again, really like that song live. I, listen, I like that song in the recording, but I really like that song live. That is definitely a song to see live. Um, then they played Pure Gold. Uh, the singer danced with the dancers for like every little tiny instrumental piece, which was awesome. Um, and then the bridge, they like recorded the singer's part. And so he continued dancing. Um, like he was like throwing his guitar and like mic stand like it was amazing it was a really fun song to see live as well and a great follow-up to right so you had um, back around followed by pure gold and all this like dancing and like just pure like energy for songs that are not like inherently energetic so I really liked that I thought it um, worked really well and especially back to back like that so that was pretty cool um, all right, so after that, they played Arrow. Um, he started slower, like acoustic, and then all of a sudden the instruments came in um, for the first verse, which was awesome. And they did like this amazing instrumental ending, which I really liked. Um, then he kind of stopped. This was like the first break in the show, which is amazing and incredible and really impressive. Um, said hello, he thanks the crowd for being there. Um, and then he did like a follow along thing where he was like making noises and doing motions and people had to make those same noises and do those same motions. Um, so that was interesting. I don't know if it really went anywhere or was for a specific reason. Like it's not like we then incorporated it into the next song, but it was fun, nice to interact. Um, then they played Hot Tea, <laughs> which has been like, uh, my obsession um so good <laughs> uh so he definitely slowed like right before the chorus i don't know if it's called the pre-chorus or the end of the first verse technically but um really really liked it um 
definitely like loved the like piano there was only a piano part and like this consistent electronic sound so I really liked that um, and then all of a sudden the drums and other instruments came back in and the choreographed dancers came out and so it it was just so good I really like that song um, I also thought it was interesting to see how they ended that song because in the video I think the ending of the video is like very significant um, and so he just stood um, like back further back on the stage and just kind of put his hands up but I don't know I just I was just an observation not anything bad or good just an observation I was curious because I again I feel like that last moment in the video is so significant with the latter um, and so yeah, it was just interesting. Um, I'm saying I'm a lot, sorry guys. So then came Move Me. Let me tell you, playing hot tea right before Move Me, mm, good choices. That was really, really good choice. Um, such a great follow-up to that the to hot tea. Seriously, it was just so good. Um, so good. <laughs> I really wanted to see that song, so it was fantastic. And so I don't know. Um, there's like this scene in. Um, Oh my gosh, guys, or it's that movie with what's his face in it, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, it reminded me of that when it, the move me part first came on. It literally seemed like the crowd was like in this like floating moment. It was really quite a cool feeling for that song. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'll think of it, guys. Don't worry, Elton John, that Elton John movie where he like like rises up from the piano when he's playing Rocket Man. Yeah, that is how I felt the room went when he, that first time that the Move Me part came on, the chorus. Oh my gosh, it was just like incredible. It was really, really cool. Uh, okay, so after that, he starts telling the story. And at first, like there were some like funny parts to it. So people were laughing and then it got real serious real quick. And then I realized that it was a um, like spoken word poem. Um, I'm gonna call it Night Swims. That seemed to be a recurring theme throughout. So uh, yeah, I thought the words were really beautiful. He kind of sang at some point in the middle of it. I thought it was really interesting and well done. And then after that, it went kind of right into time two, which was a really good place to put that slower song right, right after this like, no instruments, just spoken word, right? The lights had dimmed and it was just the spotlight on him um, for the spoken word part. So, um, so yeah, again, I liked that combination. Unfortunately, it wasn't my favorite just because I had just come off of the Arrow Hot Tea Move Me combo high. Like I was like, oh my gosh, this was an epic 15 minutes. And then it was like, oh, okay, we're doing something different, but epic 15 minutes and then time. So yeah, again, the song was great, loved the song, just didn't love it in the moment, but it was like well placed because Move Me kind of has that like slower feel to it, especially in the chorus. So I don't know, like I, I'm gonna have to really think about it in terms of credit or points, I guess, because again, it wouldn't have, it was not my choice. It would not have been my choice, but um, it also like wasn't necessarily like a bad thing either, I guess, I don't really know. Um, okay. So then after that, uh, they brought the uh, they brought the giant white sheet out again, and they played the beginning. I don't know what I wrote there. Uh, oh, oh, I know what I wrote there. Okay, so they played breakfast, and the beginning of breakfast was acoustic, which was pretty awesome. Um, and then the whole band came in, and the dancers came out, and it had a really cool effect. So I really. Um, enjoyed that song as well and again I thought it was a good follow-up to the previous song after that they played Summerland and then I was like all right now we're getting back into like this feel like vibe whatever you want to call it um so yeah I really love how the first verse was saying I want to say there was like a slight gravelly quality it literally was just for like two lines but it definitely was different and I loved it and it was great and again, that's like just a fun song. And then they went into What's Wrong, which again, really good follow-up song. Um, at first they sat on uh, like the raised seat, or all of them kind of sat, well, the drummer was obviously on the raised stage because he's on the drums, but the two um, other non-drummers in the band 
sat on like the raised part of the little stages for their instruments and then the dancers came out during that song as well. Again, really like that song, so that was awesome. Um, then he put a flat hat rim, oh, flat rimmed, oh boy guys, a flat rimmed hat on and, um, and then they played Everything Machine. Um, you know, he hung the hat on the mic stand. At one point he added sunglasses to his look and then he threw the hat into the crowd. Definitely interesting to see that song live. I have listened to it a few times. It sounded pretty different from the recording. So I'm definitely excited to go back and listen to that song. And again, I like changes. So I thought that was a good song. Definitely, again, gonna have to go back and kind of compare what I think I remember hearing to what I heard at the show. Um, after that, uh, one of the dancers in a cowboy outfit came out and they had like a back and forth with the drummer. And so like at first the drummer was following the cowboy's movements with the different drums. So that was pretty cool. And then they kind of had like a dance off. The drummer would drum, the cowboy would dance, the drummer would drum, the cowboy would dance. And then at the end, it was kind of just like both of them doing like the cowboy was dancing while the drummer was drumming. So that was pretty cool. Definitely the, um, well, I guess technically it was like the, guys what is that called oh boy <laughs> okay <laughs> it's late um all right so then after that the rest of the band came back on and they played still alive there was definitely some changes in the pace of the bridge so wonderful loved every second of that song um yeah i have not listened to that song recently because i've been listening to hot tea and move me um and the new half of their album and so like hearing that song live I was like oh this song is so good so I really liked hearing that after that he said thank you um and then again he had the crowd follow along with the sounds and the motions again not quite sure what the end game there was but maybe it's gonna be in the video because there was definitely a camera so um yeah so then they played make of it which was such a good song I was like what songs are they gonna play for their encore encore what's the word I was thinking of before by the way um yeah so I was like super pumped because when they started playing it I was like oh yeah duh <laughs> um the dancer came out and um yeah I thought that was a really good second to last song and then guys I was so excited so the first time I saw them I knew they weren't gonna play this song but I was like I need to see them headlines so that I can see them play the song and then they started playing it and I was like, this is Creature. It's so good. Oh, it was so good. The instrumental opening was awesome. I really liked it. Um, it was like such a good epic show ender. And again, they could have ended with Still Live. They could have ended with um, Move Me, technically that's their new single, or Hot Tea, which is probably like another one of their singles right now, I think. Um, but yeah, I thought it was awesome. I really liked it. And then um, the dancers came out during like the bridge part and um so the singer was still like in on the towards the back of the stage singing and then when um the singing part was over he came and danced with the dancers so it was awesome it was like a super fun way to end the show so yeah um man score wise okay so daisy the great was good they definitely surprised me i liked them more than i thought i would again wouldn't not have been my choice for opener definitely had those like two last songs were just slow and i don't think that they were great enders maybe if they were like the headliner and they were in the middle kind of like half alive did it would have been better um half alive my only complaints were i mean if you played runaway last i would have been like a 10 um <laughs> just because i love that song so much uh again they definitely had a good order there was that one like just because i loved those songs so much and again like maybe if i had known time two more or had been more passionate about the following songs i wouldn't have minded it so much but for me personally because i have been obsessed with hot tea and move me and then to go into the spoken word which was cool but it just like for me you just like i don't know it just kind of quashed the like amazingness of that moment but then I thought there was a really strong finish, so I, I really enjoyed that. And I was super excited to see Creature because I, I wanted to see that song. And um, yeah, so I'm going to give this one... I'm going to go 8.5. I think that's a solid score. Again, the opener wasn't my favorite. Um, but Half Life is so good and their dancers are so good. 
yeah 8.5 all right so let me know what you think like subscribe and comment and i will see you guys next time bye <laughs>